Hey everybody, this is James from Isotropic and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a sticky header that hides when it needs to be hidden and shows when it needs to be shown. And I'm going to, instead of taking a long time to describe what I'm going to show you how to build today, I'm going to give you a visual demonstration. So this is AppSumo. AppSumo is a platform or a marketplace where creators sell lifetime deals on software. If you own Oxygen Builder, chances are you've seen this website. If you haven't seen this website, go check it out. It's linked in the description. But what we're looking at is the AppSumo header right here. And you can see um, very usable, login, there's a cart, uh, there's also a search bar. And as we scroll down, that header begins to hide. That's great because we have a lot of room real estate or screen real estate here. And we can see everything very easily. But what if I want to go to a new page? Um, instead of having to scroll all the way up with this JavaScript library that I'm going to introduce to you, it will pull itself back down as we begin to scroll up and then it will hide again. The other thing to note is that this is now a transparent background. As we scroll down, it becomes a uh, green background, solid green background. Um, so that's the behavior we're going to be making. This is the best of both worlds. Instead of having it stuck to the top of your page and as you scroll, it just goes away and remains at the top of the page. Um, it, it is sticky, but it doesn't take up that screen real estate, which is great. Very good for conversion, very good for usability, very good for user experience. Also, AppSumo is a humongous e-commerce platform. So if they're implementing this, Chances are they had tons of A-B testing, and this is what worked for visitors and consumers. I use this effect on pretty much all of our websites now, and this goes from large e-commerce setups to nonprofit websites to blogs to everything. And the reason I use it is, again, because of that user experience. You get the benefits of a header that is always at the top of the, uh, top of the page fixed, but it doesn't take up all that real estate. So let's take a look at the JavaScript, how to build it, and then let's actually build it. So what we're going to use to create this is something called headroom.js. Headroom.js is a super tiny, and you can see the production is 1.38 kilobytes, super tiny um, JavaScript library that implements exactly that effect. And you can actually see it on this page too. Pulls back up as you scroll up, and it goes away as you scroll down. And you'll notice that the AppSumo one it's almost instantaneous as we scroll up. With the headroom one, we have a little scrolling and we actually need to be pretty violent with that scroll to bring it back down. So that's what we're going to be using. Let's actually talk about how to build it. So I have a sandbox website. Um, if you ever wanna do a sandbox oxygen builder, just go to oxygenbuilder.com slash try. Um, and this is just a standard Oxygen Builder template. And you can see that this is using the header builder, so there's some uh, resemblance of a sticky header where it just fades in, but it's always gonna remain stuck at the top, and that's just no fun. Takes up too much space, doesn't look very good, so let's fix that right now. The way this um, website is set up is that it is using a catch-all template for a header and footer, and then an inner content template and that's what this main is. So the first thing is this is by default set up to have a sticky header, header row, um, and this is using the header builder. Then we have our inner content and then we have a couple additional things, but it's mainly the sticky header, the footer, and then the inner content. I absolutely despise the sticky header and the header builder that comes with Oxygen. It's very limited. It gives you three different rows, and you have to fit things into those three different rows. For some people, it might work. For me, it doesn't. So what I did is I rebuilt it, and this is how I build all my websites. I rebuilt it by using a section uh, and just copied out these two elements of the header builder, took this section, um, aligned everything horizontally, using flex, and then spaced it out using space between. And I didn't do anything responsive, I didn't do anything like that, but that's how I set it up. So now I'm going to delete this, and we have the same header here, except it actually looks a little bit um, better, a little bit bigger in my opinion. Um, and then the next thing to do is set your section 
to be a header. And something to note is that I don't believe you can use the header builder if you want to use headroom.js. So just put it in a section and then tag it as a header. It does the same thing. So now we have our header built. The next thing to do is install headroom.js. And we can see that there's a development version and there's a production version. The development version here is um, unminified. The production version is minified. And you'll see that these are both very small. I'm going to just use our production version or, or our development version to show you different things. But um, when you're installing it, you should probably be using production. This is a JavaScript library, so there are many different ways to install it. The way I'm going to install it just to show you how everything works is by using the advanced scripts plugin that is linked in the description. This is a paid version of essentially code snippets with a ton of different options. I really like this plugin. It's one of my favorite for Oxygen. It makes it really easy to install different things. So we're going to install the headroom.js library. We're going to initialize the headroom.js library. We're going to specify in HTML that we want that initialization to apply to our header here. And we're finally going to add CSS styles. And the way headroom works is that we have our initial class or our initial header and we have to have it tagged as a header and it has to have the class headroom. And I'll show you how to do that in, in Oxygen in a second. Then as we scroll down and up and in and out, there are different classes that this library will then apply. So it will apply as we're scrolling down headroom unpinned. As we're scrolling up, it will apply headroom pinned. When we get to the top of the website, it's going to apply headroom top. When we get to maybe the bottom of the website, it's going to apply headroom bottom. And here we can see the different classes that are applied. Headroom, headroom pinned, unpinned, top, not top, bottom, not bottom, frozen, pinned, and maybe there's a bar at the top of them. And that is really the default version, the default behavior of what this does. It just applies as you scroll down these various classes based on the positioning on the screen. So let's take a look at this headroom instance and see how it actually works. So we see header, and this is just ID as a header. Um, the class is primarily headroom. And then as we begin to scroll, we can see headroom, not bottom, headroom, pinned, headroom, top. So this is telling you that we're at the top of the page. As we scroll, we can see it says headroom not top and headroom unpinned. And then as we scroll up violently, it says headroom pinned, and it still says headroom not top. But we get to the top, it brings it back, headroom pinned, headroom topped. So you can see that there are different classes applied for different areas of the screen. And we're going to use that alongside CSS and transition rules to move the header in various directions. And we'll see that now that we have our class headroom and the different classes are being applied, there's just CSS that's applied here. Uh, and for the most basic one, when it's pinned, it can be shown as a block. When it's unpinned, it can be hidden with CSS. This is the, the code that I use. Um, the headroom transition is 200 milliseconds, and then it's going to use translate Y um, to pull it all the way off the screen when it's unpinned. 100% of the height of the header is going to be pulled off the screen, uh, and then when it's pinned, it's going to translate Y again to zero, push it back down onto the screen. That's probably the most basic um, thing that we're doing here in terms of what AppSum is doing. They're doing exactly that. They're using transform y to pull it off the screen the only additional thing is when it's headroom not top they're applying a um, css rule that makes the background green so enough talking let's actually install this and uh, figure out this effect so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just copy and paste this directly into our advanced scripts instance um, you have the capability to use Unpackaged, which is a CDN, and you can load it from a link. So you can load it from URL, you can custom code, um, really whatever works best for you. And you can see that I've used this really a lot. And we're going to actually combine our headroom.js and our initialization for this library into one. If you're using a C, uh, if you're using a uh, CDN delivered version of this, I would place the initialization JavaScript directly into 
the JavaScript section of the header. Um, really whatever works best for you. It's there are a lot of different methods to get this to work. Um, so this is our headroom library here. And you can see that there are a lot of different um, elements and and aspects of this library. Nothing really for us to worry about. We don't need to change anything except we just need to add in um, the initialization. So right now this is actually added in. Um, this is now loading on all aspects of the website. So what we need to do now is actually initialize the library. And what this means is that we're going to take all of this code, initialize it, apply it to this specific header right here, uh, and then use CSS to get that styling going on. So the first thing is um, your header section needs to be tagged as a header. So tag as a header, add a class name headroom. And then we're going to copy and paste from this website our initialization, which is these three lines right here. And I'm just going to paste it into the same JavaScript file in advanced scripts. There are different ways to do this again. Um, and there's really nothing we need to change here. What this is saying is that it's going to take all of this headroom.js code above. It's going to find the header by selecting it via the tag, which is header. And it's going to create a new instance of headroom and then initialize it. So we're going to save it script is now saved and then the final thing we need to do is add in the css for our header and there are different ways to do this we can add css with advanced scripts i'm just going to create a style sheet and i'm going to actually add a style sheet in here and then just add in those various css rules and we'll probably want to on a production website prefix them which means the transform rules will have maybe a webkit and opera uh, firefox different prefixes to make sure it works on all browsers and then we're just going to save it so i think if we head oh the final thing we need to do is make our layout fixed and then we'll just fix it to the top and left of the page. It's full width, so that works perfectly. And our Z index will be very high. And then we'll need to adjust the rest of the website accordingly, but that's how that works. And then we'll just check it out on the front end and our effect should be there. So you'll see that the effect is working. Our admin bar is hiding the effect, but that is the headroom effect. It's actually relatively simple to install as JavaScript libraries go. And I'll just very quickly go over what we did to get this again. First, the actual header is built using a section and that section is tagged as a header like this. Then we add the class headroom and then we also set up the header to be fixed top and left positioning of zero is high Z index. And then we'll need to offset the inner content by the height of the header. Um, so quickly, let's just assume that maybe our height is 100 pixels and it's just gonna be pushed down 100. So it's 80 pixels and they're pushed down 80 pixels. So then our header remains like so. All right, so once the header is built and installed on the website, um, we're going to install the actual JavaScript, probably using the production version um, or by using the CDN version of this script. And what this is doing is we're going to take all of this code, we're going to install it using advanced scripts, code snippets, scripts organizer, anything that you use to install this um, script with. Uh, in my situation, I used advanced scripts, JavaScript custom code, pasted it in, hooked into the footer, saved it, and then we need to initialize it. So we're going to simply initialize it by copying and pasting from the headroom.js website. Um, and what this is doing, selects your header, creates a new instance, and then initializes the headroom library, applying it to that uh, specific header. Final thing is add in the CSS. Um, that uses those various classes that get applied 
when scrolling. So our CSS is just the transform. Um, so we have our transform translate. It's going to pull it 100% up when scrolling down, push it all the way down when scrolling up. And that's how you do headroom.js on Oxygen and really on any website. Um, just ensure that everything is built the same way it was built here. Hopefully this was a helpful video. Uh, if you liked it, feel free to subscribe, give it a like, um, share it with your friends, and I'll be back very soon with additional tutorials.